Okay, we'll uh, get started. So good, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for taking the time and joining us at Giraffe Connect. Uh, for folks who are new, I just wanted to give a quick introduction of Giraffe. Uh, Giraffe is a digital platform that creates high yield investment opportunities in the fixed income space and provides that through all the direct investors through a form of uh, digital platform. Uh, in today's episode, uh, we'll uh, the agenda-wise, if I have to talk about it, we'll just spend a little bit of time about introducing what Giraffe is, the type of products that we provide on the platform, uh, and uh, the team, and how the journey has been. Then we quickly will shift to how we evaluate every opportunity and bring it to the platform, and what kind of framework that we use to evaluate the opportunities before we bring it and uh, make it available to the investors. Then we'll go a little bit more into a particular type of asset class that we normally put on our platform, which is the corporate debt. Uh, so we'll discuss about it, and we'll also discuss a couple of examples of opportunities that are currently live on the platform. Uh, with that said, uh, I will quickly go and uh, introduce the team. Um, so Giraffe was founded by Saurav Ghosh and Vinita Agarwal in uh, September 2021, so about 13 months back. And Saurav and Vinit are in this prior to uh, founding Giraffe. They have worked in uh, different spaces in the hospitality, real estate, uh, in terms of investment side. Uh, and one of the primary reasons they kind of founded Giraffe is to provide an ability for, um, for uh, democratized investors and uh, retail investors specifically to participate in good fixed high yield in instruments. And uh, that's how the company has been found. And along with them, we have a good type of talent across different areas. And to introduce myself, I'm Jay Prakash, uh, and uh, I've been with Giraffe for some time, about four or five months. Prior to that, over 18 years of experience in the financial services space, and I've worked uh, domestically and in international markets in the retail banking, wealth management, lending space. And along with me is Vikas Bansa, who heads the investment space. And Vikas, if you are there, can you introduce my, yourself, please? Yeah, thanks, JP. So, hi, uh, as you all know, I'm Vikas Bansal. I head the investment at Giraffe. Uh, I have a total of 15 plus years of experience, and I've been a corporate banker throughout my life. And uh, before joining Giraffe, I was heading the Northern region for BFIG for Kotak Mahindra Bank. And I am an engineer by trade and have done my MBA for my MF. Thanks. That's a brief about myself. Uh, JP, you can continue. Perfect. I think so. I, I think just want to say that the leadership team, uh, as overall, uh, we've got more than 100 years of experience, uh, a lot of it in the primarily in the BFSI segment uh, across different parts of the financial services, uh, I would say, uh, specialties there. Um, and we are backed by Axel Partners, Capital A, uh, and Monkey Car Families, uh, some seed investors. Uh, so within the and so we are backed by good market investors. And as I kind of talked about earlier on, in terms of why Giraffe uh, was, is uh, we found that fixed income products in the markets largely offer yields which are less than 10 percent and if you look at where we are with respect to inflations a um, lot of times even they don't even beat the inflations and sometimes when they do are, are available it was very available only to the alternate worth customers or institutional customers it was not available for retail customers to participate and there was no robust mechanism to curate it no robust mechanism to actually monitor it uh, even if somebody wants to participate it becomes very, it becomes very complex to participate and then receive payments. So we wanted to find a way to bring those kind of investments to investors. So that's broadly the why Giraffe was founded. And what do we currently offer? And we'll a little bit look at the type of products that we will do in the Giraffe platform. We have different type of asset products that we bring and uh, those yields in the range of 8% all the way up to 20%. Some of them are rated, some of them are unrated and the products can include invoices, accounting, real estate, some corporate debts, venture debts, and we'll talk a little bit about it as we go uh, later on the slides. Um, and Giraffe uh, takes full responsibility in the form of uh, identifying those good opportunities. Um, we curate and have conversations before we bring those opportunities. We take them through a proper risk framework, and which is another thing which we'll talk about today, and before we bring this investment opportunity for investors to participate. And 
how investors and partners can achieve if i look into it is i mean today if you look at capital markets uh, investors or partners who also manage a lot of clients uh, they do participate in different markets whether it's uh, mutual fund stock markets uh, so we do want to give opportunities we, the all the opportunities that we provide on the platform are fixed income opportunities in different asset classes we do want, want investors to kind of look at it and see how they can use these products to add diversity to the platform uh, because all our products are fixed so there is a good predictability uh, very uh, tenures are typically about 3 to 36 months uh, so this can you predictable uh, so how they can add these products uh, to their portfolios uh, we provide all details about the investments in terms of the tenures the yields that you will get it uh, what are the disclosures uh, kind of risk the, the the product has information about the companies uh, so the investors can view understand and work then they can always reach out to us where we explain and they can choose those products that will perfectly fit in the portfolio and they can create the exposure for them uh, and then as i talked about uh, the team uh, pretty much all of us uh, significant number of experience worked uh, domestically internationally in different large institutions hsbc rbs uh, kotak mahindra so you name it i think we have all come so i think uh, so that kind of credibility of looking at it curating it and giving it to the investors so there's a good team that kind of works on the same and talking about the products i'll go a little bit brief on this uh, on the product side of it um, on the product side uh, we do offer different type of asset classes as i talked about on the corporate debt which we'll talk a little bit more today uh, invoice discounting uh, asset leasing venture debt uh, so in corporate debt they are debt that we give it to the companies have a fixed tenure there could be a component of interest and principal payments it's quarterly or monthly uh, defined tenure that we have normally backed by uh, security on receivables uh, and or any other hard security that we have the tenure can go between 12 to 36 months with yields uh, internal rate of returns uh, going between 8 to 14 percent then we have the invoice discounting primarily to manage working capital specifically when we're talking about billing invoicing um, and uh, so we take care of working with them and bring those invoices and talk about who are the anchors, who are the borrowers. And the tenure goes between 30 to 90 days, giving you yield between 10 to 14 percent. Um, then we have asset leasing where it is back, uh, backed by the lease uh, on the asset that we lease on. Uh, so that's the security that comes along with it. People take it, whether it is uh, people running a fleet of cards, running on any platform, uh, or it could be very hard machinery. So uh, again, those hard assets uh, there is the aspect of borrowing that happens uh, which has a tenure between 15 to 36 uh, that can, yields can go 14 to 18 percent on analyzed basis venture debt you can think about from a venture capital is on the debt side of it so uh, this is for new age companies uh, if you talk about uh, batteries uh, solars uh, so a lot of new age companies uh, which are innovating in the space uh, so we also uh, uh, bring so opportunities with the tenure of 12 to 15 months the yields could be in much more higher because they are venture kind of companies um, so i think we want to make sure that we are one of the platforms that gives a good breadth of asset classes that uh, people can participate it's just not one product so across the breadth of products within each product category or asset class we bring different type of borrowers uh, with different yields different rating and rating so we want to create as much diversity of options that we can provide it to the investors or so that they can choose those investment products and curate it for their portfolios. So I think that's what uh, we are aiming and we are one of the only platform we could say that creates this kind of diversity of product as a classes that we want to bring in. So uh, as, as I kind of talked about, so that gives a good uh, introduction and then we will definitely take questions at the end as well. So I think one of the important part of a giraffe, which is a central pillar, pillar of why uh, giraffes opportunities that we bring and how much time we take to make sure they are of uh, absolute great quality. Uh, we all our opportunities go through a credit approval process. And I will ask because because on that particular note, we do bring a lot of opportunities to the platform. Um, and it's not like everybody who wants to just borrow money, we bring it to the platform, right? So what does the normally the process takes? I mean, time wise and steps that's involved and what do you look at before we bring any opportunity to the platform? Yeah, so uh, JP, like we are slightly traditional in sourcing of the 
borrowers. So we have uh, a team, it's again an experienced team of four or five members. They scout for opportunities in the market. And uh, we first gauge the interest of the borrower. Uh, what is its capital requirement? And obviously, we try to understand the business. The first step is to understand the business and the management. So once we understand the business and management, and we have a preliminary discussion. And once we understand, okay, this is uh, this is something we can go ahead. It, uh, we have a uh, in principle approval, which is a credit committee. There are six and seven uh, top members of the uh, organization, which you have shown in your second slide, which are the experienced people from the banks uh, and that has been working in the financial services. They deliberate whether uh, one has to go through this uh, opportunity or not, because uh, uh, we almost evaluate two to three opportunities per day. So it uh, becomes really difficult to deep dive in each one of them. So on the prime of AC, we do a very, uh, I would say, bird's eye view analysis. And uh, if all the numbers are in, we have internal criteria. If uh, there are a minimum turnover criteria and the pedigree, uh, profitability, all those sort of parameters. <laughs> Uh, criteria we have. Once they match and the in principle approval is done, we go for a detailed due diligence and obviously it's uh, much more deep diving, understanding each and every number on the balance sheet, uh, looking at the security structure, what is the repayment schedule, what is the cash flows, what has been the uh, market feedback, what is the banker's feedback. So all those like uh, detailed credit due diligence, we do it. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then uh, we again go back to the credit committee and we present our findings. And once the committee approves, then we go for the documentation and the legal part of it, like the documents are executed and the same is put onto the website. So from a deal origination to investment, uh, it takes minimum, I would say two to three months because, mm. uh, because these are large companies. You have to understand each and every, uh, and we need, and as you mentioned rightly in the starting, we are a curated platform. We just don't bring anything uh, which is available in the market. So we understand the business and uh, we, are, uh, we are aware of the credit risk and the different risk of the business. Then we bring it to the table. So every month you won't see giraffe having the repeated opportunities. Our philosophy is like uh, get a good counterparty, do uh, a 20, 30 crores of volume with the party and then look out for. So we diversify, but uh, uh, that's our philosophy. So we look at a company which is of minimum scale, size, pedigree. That has been our uh, philosophy till then. So approximately, if you think about it, like uh, how many opportunities do make the cut and come to the platform? Um, if I were to talk about the percentage, it's less than or almost around 10 to 11 percent from lead to conversion. So hmm. another way to look at it, 90 percent of the opportunities gets rejected or it may be due to many reasons. It's not maybe due to credit only. Maybe the tenor that we are looking for is not commensurate. The structure we are seeing is not commensurate. The pricing that uh, we both have in mind, the borrower and us, does not match. Even say the security that we want. So there could be X number of reasons. And maybe uh, sometimes it's they are in too much of hurry. And uh, we just want to do the more detailed due diligence and uh, take our own time to understand the business. So there could be plethora of reasons. So uh, as we have seen from the past background, it's almost 10% of the opportunities leads. That is deal origination uh, to the last stage execution. I would say ten percent of them gets accepted on the platform. Okay, I think a lot of times I do ask questions when I go meet clients. Would be is uh, okay after you curate and bring the opportunity uh, to the platform. Uh, once the customer invests, is that everything it, or do you do something more after that? So if no, you can no, no, walk no. through that. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for pointing it out. It's not that uh, we just wash off our hands once the opportunity is listed and it's sold out. Uh, we do on a day, like almost a monthly or quarterly review, depending on the company and the scale of size. We get the data. We get the data. And um, as I said, like uh, we work with very selected borrowers and we want to scale with them. So it's very important for us to keep monitoring their progress, whatever, because in any proposal, you make some assumptions about the future, how the company's future would be. That's how you evaluate a credit. On the basis of some assumptions, you give the money. So we monitor whether those assumptions has been in line or not. Is company uh, doing below uh, or at par or at better than those? So till now, I can safely say that oh, we haven't had a single opportunity where there's a default and there has been a very satisfactory track record of all the opportunities that we've got. Got it. Okay. So thanks for that, uh, Vikas. I think so broadly, I think team overall, we have been, Giraffe has been in operations for about 13 months. Uh, we have done 700 crores of investments in volumes. 
uh, and we have returned uh, as because pointed out uh, I mean we have been good we have been able to create good opportunities so there is no default still date and we have returned back 300 crores worth of, of capital back to investors with returns uh, we are a currently of team of 68 and we are growing uh, because we just started and uh, we want to bring great opportunities to the investors continuously with that said, we'll go into the next section of uh, today. One of the asset classes of I think we talked about some of the different type of products we do. One of the things we do is on the corporate debt. So I think a lot of times people ask corporate debt bond, which is same. So because maybe we can start off with uh, the the corporate debt. What is it typically? What it entails in terms of structure, in terms of payments, in terms of investments, tenure. That will be great if we can start off with that. So uh, I'll start with a very generic definition. So without them, nobody needs to read it. So corporate debt is simply when you give money to a company for its XYZ purpose for a fixed return. So you might want a monthly interest. So that is what is corporate debt. Corporate debt can be through loan. Loan is one mechanism. Corporate debt and loan is not synonymous. Loan is a Subclassification of corporate debt. So banks give loans, NBFC give loans to the company. Similarly, there is an instrument which is called non-convertible debenture, NCD or bonds, commonly known as known as bonds. So bonds is a tradable loan, you can say. So this is what is corporate debt. So we use corporate debt as an alias for bonds, and it is nothing. It's a it's a borrowing to the company. We we give money to the company for its growth or working capital purpose for a fixed period and for the fixed return. And the ones who are subscribing to the bonds are the capital givers. And the one who is issuing the bond, like the corporate, the large corporate, which is issuing the bond, they are taking the money. So in lieu of the money, they give you bond. Okay, that's a terms and conditions written on the paper, which is in a dematerialized form. Uh, yeah, like a share certificate, when you invest in a company, you, uh, you get the share certificate the same way when you, uh, by investing in a bond opportunity, you get the uh, bond certificate in your demeter. So that's what is corporate bond is. Yep. Thanks, Vikas. So I, I think on that note, I think there were a few questions about the variations, right? There, there is. I think there. I've secured corporate yeah, bond, uh, so, unsecured corporate. I so think maybe we can spend a little bit of time of explaining that for everybody. I think that will clear a lot of questions that I usually get. Yeah, so there's a lot of jargon thrown around when you see a bond. It's like senior, secured, redeemable, non-convertible, debenture. So uh, it's not that confusing. So I would just like to break it into three main uh, sub-classifications. So uh, these are not uh, exclusive. Like if it is rated, it cannot be unsecured. So this is a mix and match. So I'll start with rated and unrated. So uh, uh, you, many of you might, might be aware in India, there are, a couple, there are a few rating agencies which have been given license through RBI and SEBI. They are the independent party. They evaluate the company and give it a credit score. And that credit score determines how risk worthy is the company. So they every globally, the scale is triple A to uh, triple B, which is an investment grade. It goes till D. So the there's an independent third party check what is the company's health, financial health, and whether the company who is borrowing, what is the probability of default. So uh, if the company has been evaluated by external agency, it is called rated. If it is not, it is called unrated. So uh, one should look at whether it's a rated paper or unrated paper. Then comes the second classification, which is secured or unsecured. It's simple when you're giving money to the to a company, whether they have provided you any security. Is it uh, backed by any collateral of the company? If it is backed by any collateral, you call it secure. If it is not backed by any collateral, it is unsecured. Senior and subordinate. So this is what you can say, who would have uh, uh, the, uh, I would like to say, if the company goes into rough weather or say it goes bankrupt, who would get the money first? So what is the hierarchy in which the people would get money. So the uh, utmost, that at the topmost is the senior. So any debt which is senior, uh, mostly is the senior debt is the secured one. So if a debt is senior, so the first uh, 
money they have the claim on the assets of the company the second is subordinate then is the unsecured and obviously at the last is the equity equity holders so that's the waterfall mechanism so the ideal case would be the one should uh, invest in a senior secured rated papers uh, that's the ideal situation yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, so I think risk framework, we a little bit talked about it. Maybe I think if we can quickly touch upon the type of risks that are involved in the corporate debt investments. Yeah. So uh, since we are doing bonds, so, uh, I think someone has asked this question, what are the risks? In, so currently we are covering only of corporate debt. So one is a credit and default risk. When you're giving money to any counterparty, say if you're giving the money to your friend or a company or a corporate, there is always an element of doubt whether that company would be able to pay on time or not. That if they do not pay on this, this ability to pay on time or the intention to pay on time is called credit risk. Uh, so this is the our default risk. So if the comp one needs to gauge whether the company is uh, healthy enough to repay the debt. So this is what is credit risk. Maturity or duration less risk. So what happens? Uh, a company which has a I say if you invest in a company for three or say five years or 10 years, so that is what is called a maturity or duration risk. If you invest for a shorter period of time, then the maturity or duration risk is less. And if you invest for a longer period of time, then it is a more riskier. And obviously, uh, there are other elements to it. I'm not getting into interest rate risk. So I'll just keep it simple. So the shorter the tenor, the better it is. So uh, our philosophy is to keep the tenor less than three years unless we find a some opportunities which is really credit worthy, we can we go for higher tenor, which we have we haven't gone it till now. So our sweet spot is anywhere between one month to three years. Liquidity risk is you say if you have invested into a bond and tomorrow you want to sell it and uh, you want maybe uh, you want the money immediately. So uh, uh, currently the bond markets in India are not very developed. So you cannot sell it. Though if you find a buyer uh, in uh, in a bilateral trade, you can do it, but this is the risk one should keep in mind while investing in any opportunity. So uh, you should put in your money uh, with a view that your money shall be locked for that period of uh, time. Structure is is again that uh, what is the structure of the bond? Is it rated? Is it unsecured? That one should have a look at and how how the, it is structured. Okay. Perfect. I think so. With that, I think we will jump quickly talk about a couple of opportunities that we have on the platform. Uh, so I think two pla uh, two opportunities we'll talk today. Uh, one is the home credit, and the other one we'll talk about is uh, uh, the Ugro Capital. So yeah, just, just before we go further, yeah, DP. So I'll just give the, our uh, our esteemed uh, participants. Uh, home credit is uh, uh, an opportunity, and uh, JP happens to have been associated with home credit in the past and uh, i think you uh, i i give you how long you have worked with home credit i think uh, pre previous time you were with home credit before giraffe correct yeah, yeah yeah i was yeah yeah i was the chief customer officer there for uh, three years with home credit yeah so i think uh, i obviously evaluated this opportunity this is our second deal first deal we did in february and uh, that goes sold out uh, really fast this is after seven eight months uh, we have done the second tranche and uh, in between JP joined us and I think uh, JP uh, you would be the better person to explain as a, like uh, it's your past organization and you were there for quite a while so I'll leave it up to you yeah uh, thanks so because uh, so I think broadly uh, what I will do on home credit is to provide you uh, the information about home credit uh, their background and why we believe it is a great opportunity for investors to participate and provide all the details for investors to make uh, a good judgment about whether this could fit into their portfolio in terms of investments and diversification, right? So home credit is part of a PPF group. A PPF group is based out of, um, uh, is registered in Netherlands, but they are based primarily in Czech Republic. They are present in 25 countries. Uh, their asset base is about 42 billion euros. That's the size of the company in terms of across. And PPF group uh, is a, I would say it's a conglomerate which participates. They have seven to eight business lines. You can talk about telecom, talk about media, talk about financial services, real estate. So they are a portfolio of uh, seven, eight different industries uh, with presence in 25 countries with a large asset base. And Home Credit Group is 
part of one company within the financial services domain so if you look leave everything within financial within financial services also they have home credit group which is a a, a one uh, consumer and uh, personal lending uh, and bank also it does in seven eight countries they also have banks uh, so they have got six seven eight entities within financial and within one of those financial entities home credit group they have been there for 23 plus years of 145 million borrowers across all those different countries as part of the home credit group they got an assets of 16 billion in assets and within that home credit group home credit india is one part of the home credit group and they started operations in 2012 and is a uh, completely part of the home credit group uh, we the, they primarily focus on consumer loans cash loans but they also diversified into non lending products through partnerships uh, with banks uh, and uh, digital companies i'll talk a little bit there uh, so yeah they've got a 4500 crore loan portfolio with 15 million borrowers as of september 22nd uh, they've got a very strong support from a uh, group as i said the ppf is a large group uh, uh, and uh, as part of that 4000 crore equity has been pumped in and 2600 crores of debt again sourced from the group provided to home credit india specifically uh, they've got a distribution uh, across majority of the cities uh, because they are originating uh, several billions of loan volumes every month uh, as I said to you, they also have strategic partnerships, whether it is on the uh, mobile uh, OEM manufacturer standpoint, uh, vendor standpoint, Pine Labs, you talk about the DBS banks, uh, credit cards, SBA for credit card. So they have got a lot of partnership and they are trying to balance how they can grow the business continuously through partnerships and through themselves. And yep. this is what I was talking about. Yep, I'll just Go ahead. Forward. Yeah, because I'll just, uh, I'll, just uh, I'll act as a like I'm trying to understand what you're saying. I'll just paraphrase what I've got. Uh, what you're trying to say. The PPF Group is a large conglomerate which is there in 25 countries, and it has an asset of 42 billion euro, euros. So that's almost 3.3 lakh crores. Is that right understanding? And yeah, yeah absolutely. And PPF Group has a subsidiary which is which is into financial services called Home Credit, which has a 16 billion, and it forms 40 mm. percent assets of the group. And that home credit groups, uh, one of the subsidiaries in India, which has been well capitalized and supported by parents. And this company has been operated in India for last 10 years. So uh, this is what I've understood you're trying to convey. Is that yeah, a right um, understanding? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Because. Carry on. So yeah, I think this is what I was just talking about last time, right? So PPF group is a big, large conglomerate. And there's a telecom group with several brands operating across Europe. Uh, and then there is a media company you're talking about all media I mean, you can if you want a comparison all the video content development so again large uh, enterprise and then within the financial services home credit is one group and apart from that they have other financial brands and entities and within that home credit group comes home credit india and then there's real estate there's biotech so uh, it's a large con conglomerate as i talked about that is the reason the exercise we look at it such a large exercise with such a large equity base and and home credit as a group as well has been there for 25 years and home credit india for the past 12 years and so i think that is how home credit is i think one of the times which i always people ask is how it is part of i think i just want to show the magnitude of how big they are part of and how much of support they have got and backing both from a group level in terms of equity and debt standpoint so that's the size of the home credit so far in india they've got 15 million borrowers as I said, a lot of class cities, they are pretty much in all cities across Pan India. If you look at it, uh, they do several billion of loan volumes every month. They are with uh, 53,000 POS centers. Um, I think uh, they use very good machine learning underwriting models to evaluate customers. Uh, so I think that the business is growing and they continue to grow on that fact. And from uh, relationships of banks, uh, uh, as I said, they are into joint lending partnerships where they're giving loans, partnering with banks. They've got good amount of debt. And one thing which I talked about before, uh, there's a large part of the funding that comes from the group, which is about 2,500 crores. On top of it, they also do uh, loans uh, locally with some key banks. Um, and But large part of it comes from the group. Um, and they are also moving the model. If you look at it, as I said, the partnership with DBS is a classic example. Uh, so with, while they continue to lend and they're profitable, we'll come back to that. They also wanted to make sure they can also become a capitalite model and that's the reason the partnership with dbs comes in right now 10 to 15 percent of the loans that they originate this is a partnership they have with the dbs bank 
So they're establishing a model of both lending from their books and also lending with partnering with big banks. And DBS was one, and now it's becoming 10%. And they're looking at other partnerships. And they're also doing a lot of revenue streams to the different partnerships as well. And uh, regarding the balance sheet, I think uh, uh, from that angle, uh, I think because you can also jump in broadly, but there's a lot of comfort if you look at it in terms of liquidity, right? Their cash balance position is 319 crores as of September. So that's a big part of how much liquidity they have just on the, on the cash balance that they have. On top of it, if you look at the car ratio, which is the capital asset ratio, I think broadly in that ratio, if you look at it, the risk ratios, typically the 15% is the RBI requirement and they are very comfortably sitting over 20%. The portfolio quality is improving. If you look at, uh, this is the balance sheet uh, broad, broadly, I would say, but which we'll look at it from an income standpoint, the portfolio quality is increasing. Yeah, I'm sorry yeah, sure. to you. So uh, one thing I would like to highlight, which I'm getting is like, uh, I see the company has given a loan of around 4,600 crores. Okay, that's the asset that they are in the market, the consumer loan. It's a, and uh, for that, 1,800 crores have come as equity. And I can see there's a borrowing of 3,200 crores. So, uh, uh, I would like to clarify out here, out of this 3,200 crores, 2,700 crores is the loan from the parent in the form of external commercial borrowing. So 1,800 plus 2,700 crores is almost how much? I can't do the maths at this point. Uh, 3,500 crores maybe. So uh, almost 3,500 crores has been put by the parent and uh, the rest of it is the loan around 700, 800 crores is the external. The local, yes. Yeah, so that's the type of conviction and the parent has to pump the money into the subsidiary. Now carry on. Yeah, they definitely. I think, see, that's the thing we kind of talked about it. I think the kind of support that home credit has from the group and from the parent is phenomenal on so, that record. What I was and trying then, to say is like external debt is very minimalistic, like 800 crores against 3,500 crores of the parent's equity. So again, 800 crores of uh, asset uh, of the borrowing, external borrowing. So, uh, one has a loan book of 4,600 crores. Yep, thanks Vikas on that. And then the portfolio quality, which we'll talk a little on the, when we come into the income aspect of it. So between the aspect of the ability to locally raise, also majority of that support they have from the group, uh, the good cash liquidity that they have, a good car ratio, which is good compared from RBI requirement of 15%, that non, non-performing assets, if you look into it, that, it's at 1.5 net, uh, which is again competitive in the market. Um, and then the loan book increasing, uh, it, it provides a good story from the balance sheet standpoint. And even if you look at the income, if you look at last uh, first half of last fiscal year compared to first half of this fiscal year, uh, the thing they have also moved with the COVID situation that happened, which kind of impacted the last, uh, last year for six months. They have also moved into being more cautious about the lending book that they want to originate. So that is also depicted in the interest income. So it was a little bit lower from a volume standpoint because they've been cautious in terms of who they want to lend. So, but the interest income is still right there, but they were able to reduce the impairment quite a lot and the operating expenses have gone and they are bad positive for the first six months in the fiscal year 23. Uh, I think that shows the aspect of comfort that we have with respect to how they have progressed in terms of managing the business month over month. Anything because you want to add? Yeah, so uh, I would say uh, we we have we don't have we haven't put the second half FY22. So they have been profitable from second half. So it also almost a year they have been profitable. So uh, so they were legacy. So we all know they are into consumer loans and COVID set badly and it impacted all the financing companies. And uh, so they had to write up and obviously the parent brought in equity to cushion the losses. And since then. Uh, the company has been very strict in the collections and which is showing in their balance sheet. So uh, we have seen the performance uh, uh, improving and uh, they are already profitable for last 12 months. Not just uh, one first half of FY23, even second half of FY22, they were profitable. Perfect, thanks. So I think I'll just want everybody to just uh, start with the key messages that what we have seen from Home Credit Group uh, as we go on to reiterate it. Uh, very strong support and being part of not only a global home credit group, but home credit group also is part of PPF group, which is 40, 42 billion assets, such a large conglomerate. And they have a very strong balance sheet with respect to cash reserves that they have, the amount of support from the group, 
the car ratios, capital adequation ratios at 20.6 percent above RBI requirement. The profitability, liquidity, we talked about it. The partnerships, we talked about it across Pan India, continuing to increase the book at the same time. Very strong underwriting to make sure they underwrite the right loans. Volume is growing, and they're also moving more into digital. So, with all these factors, uh, I think this was a uh, some uh, opportunity that we felt um, uh, as a good, credible in investment opportunity for the investments, and that's a broad overview of home credit. Uh, because if you don't have anything, we can just move to the next opportunity that we have on the platform. Yeah. So, uh, JP, just one one question. Uh, you have been saying a lot of uh, messaging like a group support, group support. So. Uh, I know this is the answer for me, but I'm asking you the question because uh, do we have any covenant where uh, in our bond? Because this seems to be a, the most uh, uh, factor that it's a global group where they have a lot of cash. So is there any covenant that the parent does not uh, have leave the company and just sells it off and goes away? Is there any covenant that stopped from doing so? Doing so? So I think if you look at specifically, uh, I think your question is regarding our investment. I think our opportunity. I think so. If I look at our home credit opportunity that we provided, right? So this is a secured corporate debt that we brought, and uh, two things I want to mention. One is the covenant that you talked about it, which is the car ratio, which I told you, capital adequation ratio, which is our way requirement fifteen percent. So they are at twenty plus. So we have a covenant that if their car ratio goes below fifteen percent, they are liable to pay back the entire payment of the loan they borrow, which means they will be paying back to the investors. So there's also a covenant we talked about where the parent group, in terms of equity holding on the uh, on on Home Credit India. So if that equity percentage they hold on Home Credit India changes, then we have a covenant that if that changes and falls below fifty-one uh, percent, they are liable to pay back the entire investment borrowing back to the investors. On top of it, the the product that we brought on the opportunity is a a senior secured renewable NCDs. It's a 12, 13 month actually tenure. So I said because it's pointing out, we focus on bringing shorter tenure products. So it's a 13 month, uh, good yield, 11 percent uh, IRR compared to what you get in the fixed income space. Uh, if we talk about FDs and even some of the other bonds as well, uh, and with kind of that kind of I would say, and then it's also secured by the receivables um, in terms of the so it's a secured uh, NCD as well. Um, so with that. Kind of uh, balance sheet income statements, the size of the companies, the support that they receive, the amount of capital infusions, both debt and equity side, and a term where we have covenants with a secured uh, bond. Uh, I think this is a uh, this is very comfortable for us to bring that opportunity to the investors to read through all the details and make uh, their own decisions tied to it. I think and anything because uh, repayment schedule. Uh, so uh, so I just want to highlight the repayment schedule. Perfect. So yeah. If one were to put the money. Say whatever the minimum investment is. Uh, say so every day the, the rate changes because uh, the accrued interest gets added upon. So uh, so if one were to invest today, and uh, so it would be the maturity will be 19 November. It's almost uh, residual tenor is 12 months. So uh, the, the the investor would get on 31st or the last date of each quarter principal plus interest in his bank account linked to the debit account. So directly. Company pays into the uh, DMAT account of the investor. So one has a regular scheme of cash flow. So in five equal quarterly installment, one will get the money back in it in its account. So that way the risk also reduces and the liquidity is provided to the individual investor. Yeah, yeah thanks, Vikas. Uh, broadly, I think in the interest of time, I think we'll just quickly go through the Ugro as well. So. I think uh, in, uh, because you're involved in the Ugro issue, maybe you can start off with uh, about Ugro and then we'll go through how Ugro uh, opportunity is a good fit or probably why we brought it to our platform. Yeah, so uh, Ugro is a, again in a, a non banking finance company. <laughs> and it is into lending to MSME space. So, uh, so what it does, it gives a full stack offering to MSMEs. And it's a listed company. It is listed on the BSC and NSC both. And it, uh, it is backed by private equity players. And it also has a similar size, slightly lesser than the home credit, but it also has around 4,000 crores of AUM. And uh, it has uh, identified significant sectors and have built again an AI model, which they lend it to. Uh, so this is what the you grow is. Uh, you can change GPK. 
So uh, the same thing. So uh, the what I said, it is MSME, which is medium and small, medium, uh, micro, small, medium enterprises. So it is uh, it is focusing on a particular segment where they want to lend to. So uh, it could be in the uh, these are different products which they offer to the supply chain. I won't take much of the time. So it has twenty branches, seventy six, uh, uh, and uh, one thousand partners. So this is uh, basically. Uh, a brief overview. You can find it on our website also, and it's there in the public domain. So it's a listed company. Carry on. Okay. Again, uh, it's about the book. Uh, uh, we have tried to highlight out here what are the different partnerships. Uh, it is doing co-lending partnership uh, bank with Bank of Baroda, SBI, IDBI, Central Bank, Indian Overseas Bank. So you would see most of the public sector banks. Uh, uh, do not have that expertise or the time uh, to evaluate the credit. So what Ugro brings to the table is the expertise to evaluate a loan, and they do the co-lending model. Say fifty percent will be lent by Bank of Baroda, and fifty percent will be lent by Ugro. So uh, Bank of Baroda has a very low cost of capital, being a PSU bank. So the uh, the borrower of Ugro gets a win-win deal. So he gets a lower uh, lower uh, rate of return, and uh, you, and obviously the banks get the good credit worthy customers. And this is a mix of the books how it has been growing. Uh, you can carry on. Again, our financial snapshot. It's uh, regarding Q1 FY23. We have not updated it. Uh, we should have done that. So again, AUM has crossed four thousand. It's a profitable company. The uh, uh, return on assets around one percent, very low leverage, around two point two six percent, and these are the projections uh, which have been shown. Uh, carry on. It's about uh, the collection efficiency. Collection efficiency is nothing but uh, uh, whatever you lend, how much you are able to collect back uh, on the due date, and uh, you can see the the point I'm trying to drive here. It has a low gross and net NPA. 2.13 net is around 1.57, similar to that of what was home credit, and uh, carry on. And again, a very uh, detailed financial snapshot. Uh, so no need to get bogged down by it. Uh, uh, we finance people at times uh, like to complicate. So I just simplify. Uh, you should look at the trend. The company has been growing. It has been profitable. Uh, the cost of borrowing has been competitive, uh, and uh, that's it. I would like to say. Uh, it uh, leverage is low. So this is about the journey of the company. Carry on, carry on. Okay. Carry on. Uh, this is again the journey. Wow. The company started in 2018. So uh, and uh, the opportunity that we have brought is of 17 month, uh, and it is again a rated it's a A minus crystal rated paper. It's a senior again secured listed uh, NCD. Uh, total opportunity size is three crores, which is almost I think. Uh, 2.2 crores has already been subscribed on our website and 80 lakhs is remaining. The investor IRR is 10.52% and the interest payout is quarterly and the investor would get the principal on maturity. So this has a slightly different repayment schedule than home credit. In home credit, uh, one was getting on quarterly basis principal and interest. In this, the principal would come at the end of the tenor. So uh, one should uh, look the repayment schedule closely and then decide to invest if they want to invest, whether it meets uh, their uh, money criteria or not. Again, uh, there are strong covenants. Capital allocation should not fall below 20%. Uh, leverage uh, should not exceed five times. And uh, so these are the covenants. Carry on. Perfect. Uh, thanks, uh, Vikas. I think... Uh, uh, I I think we come to the end of the presentation. I know we were just a few minutes over, but I think we can spend now a little bit of time we'll do is to take some questions uh, that we have got. So the first question uh, I have uh, is, can you explain comparative risks uh, involved in these instruments? Uh, I think because you can take it, we cover a little bit of it. Maybe you can take. Yeah, so uh, like I said, uh, uh, Jeffrey, you can close the uh, uh, this uh, uh, presentation. So, okay. so uh, the risk as involved, I, the, the basic risk is when you give uh, money to any company. Uh, so there's a risk of getting it back. So that's what is called credit risk. 
and uh, that's what we have defined. Uh, so what Giraffe does, it uh, tests to its ability. We try to gauge the risk and, and as per our internal risk criteria, when we feel it's uh, safe in a studio listed, uh, we put it on our website. So that's the first step. There's always an element of loss of uh, capital. So one should evaluate it uh, very carefully, read through the documents uh, and ask us question in case of any doubt. Second yep. is the liquidity risk, uh, where if you're putting in your money, you would uh, need to put it with a mindset that your capital shall be blocked for the entire period of time. You will not be able to sell it down because uh, technically it is possible to sell it down, but uh, practically it is uh, you have to find a buyer, then you have to negotiate and it might be a difficult task and you will have to explain what the bond is all about. Uh, this way you have to go about it. Third is the fraud risk uh, we have seen uh, uh, if the company does fraud and uh, there's a loss of capital. So these are the three main risks uh, which are there with any any corporate debt. Yeah, and the one thing maybe we'll add to it would be is, uh, so that's one of the reasons we try to give tenures. So when you look at the liquidity risk specifically, so there are different terms. So the, so the investor can look at those tenures and can kind of choose that fits their uh, mindset or fits their needs, I would probably say. Uh, so just want to add that one. So the next question is, what is the probability of default and how would the, the, does it affect the investor? So see, probability of default, if you if one should look at the rating, credit rating of an instrument, and if I remember it correctly, till triple B, it is around one, and every credit agency comes up with a, a comparative credit default probability. I think it's less than 2% for triple B, and it's considered investment grade. Uh, so the rating scale is triple A to triple B. And uh, if I remember that it's around 2% for triple B. So there's a 2% uh, probability of the company going bad. If it is rated triple B, and I think it's around 1.8 to 1.7% for A. Uh, I'm not uh, on top of the numbers, but it's publicly available information. And if anyone uh, wants to have this data, we can send it across to you. Yeah, I think, yeah. Uh, and I, mean, I think the second part to it, how does it affect the investor? So obviously, if there's a default, uh, 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 these are secured uh, 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 instruments. So one will, uh, so the one will have to go through the legal process to recover the funds, and uh, whatever the recovery is there, that shall be paid to the investor. So, uh, so there could be some loss of capital uh, on the amount uh, which stays invested. But uh, uh, we have seen such an instance to be uh, quite less. Okay, so I think next question is any other products will be adding in the future. Uh, that's uh, that's our endeavor to keep increasing our bouquet of uh, offerings. And uh, I think last week we brought treasury bills, uh, which is a borrowing by government of India. So even like a corporate borrows, even government of India borrows. And we brought, uh, we were the first one as an alternate investment platform to list uh, treasury bill for 90, 90 days on our platform. So our constant endeavor is to bring new and new products and we have already brought commercial paper in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a good point. I think I would probably say is I think commercial paper, which is not exactly a corporate debt instrument, I think uh, it's a six month, which is also their EDLV. I think T-bill you brought about treasury bills, which is actually a government security, which is backed, which is secure, giving an yield higher than fixed deposit. So I think that's also a 91 day uh, product that we have. And also typical products like home credit and stuff, I'm sure uh, we will be bringing more and more because, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, I think a few other questions. Uh, I think uh, I'm so seeing is some a, of the. Yeah, I think yeah. one question is from Sundara. Uh, out of the three six one four net loans, how much could be the bad and doubtful? So Sundar, uh, that's the number net NPA comes, which I think one point five six was in the case of Ubro and one point seven percent in the case of Home Credit. So you can multiply three six one four into one point seven. So that's uh, roughly the percentage of the loans. Uh, which will be the bad and doubtful loans. That what's net NPA shows it. And uh, uh, another question I like to give you, maybe I'll uh, ask it. Quickly. Asking, uh, uh, I can see some of the corporate deals which are ongoing on the Giraffe platform uh, for some time, but they are not 100% filled. Uh, is it due to, what is the reason? Is it due to less interest rate? So what will happen to those buyers who have already invested in the deal? 
So I think uh, when we look at corporate uh, debt uh, opportunities, some of the opportunities that we have a large opportunity. So there are different reasons why an opportunity would take time because of the fact that the duration could be a longer one. Uh, there are high rated secu- securities. Obviously, it depends on the people how much they want to participate um, uh, in terms of uh, buying that. So there are different reasons why it probably will not go 100% filled quickly, but eventually. people take the time to see how much they want to participate and how much they want to add to the portfolio and the second question reg- regarding uh, for people who have already invested there's nothing broadly happens for people who have invested already you'll be getting the repayments as per uh, it has been scheduled and promised depending on what the repayment schedule is if it is going to be a component of monthly or it's a quarterly interest so there will be no changes to people who already participated in the pod platform so, so i think i think on to i think the question is coming from the perspective i think he's thinking we are collecting the money first then giving it so uh, it's not that the company has already got the money the bonds is issued so uh, we have already subscribed to the bond entirely giraffe has already done it uh, so uh, those who subscribe they will get it otherwise uh, uh, giraffe we continue to hold those papers yeah i think and i think, I think one other Yeah. yeah, one of the point is uh, because even if we are some of it, I think you already the units have been allocated to you in the form of entities in your DMAT account. So I mean, based on that, the payment will happen. So there is uh, it won't be tied to the the filled ratio. I think as Vikas pointed out, it's already bond has been purchased for the full amount, and then part of it has been given to the investors. Yeah, I think Vivek is asking a very logical question. Even I thought so. Uh, he's saying that the home credit, about home credit, home credit has been operational for twenty six years in India. So I think that's where. Uh, Uh, we were not very articulate um, so apology vivek home credit group has been in uh, has been uh, operating for last 26 years across the globe it came in india in 2012 so in india they have been for last 10 years globally they have been operating i think in seven eight nine countries i guess for last 26 years under the same brand name so if you go to singapore if you go to indonesia you will find home credit group so just to make it amply clear and uh, the sake of repetition in india they have been there for last 10 years and uh, home credit as a brand has been as a business has been 26 year operating across the world uh, yeah. and another question he asked is it the first time they have made profit uh, if uh, you can yeah, before yeah, yeah before uh, covid they were profitable then they were uh, not profitable for the two years and again they become profitable so that helps you initially as any other uh, startup company that are coming in established initially when they came to india as you probably have seen they are there across the entire pan india 56000 locations 4500 book they are focused on growing significantly so the pat figures uh, are negative but uh, initially as you probably would have seen they are part of such a large conglomerate so when they want came to india and operated they want to expand quickly and did a lot of expansion so the initial years were negative and then they became profitable then covid brought them to negative and they are profitable again Okay. Uh can we have the explanation of off book AUM please? Uh, okay, I'll tell you very simple. So Yogesh what happens say I have given 100 rupees of loan. Uh now I can keep this 100 rupees on my book and I can borrow against it. What off AUM does it? Uh company says I will sell off this 20 rupees of loan to a bank. So bank bank because bank say I'm not able to create the asset as I'm getting the capital. So you give me twenty rupees of your book. So that is off book. It is serviced by the NBFC itself, but it has been bought by some other player. Or second example could be, uh, as we said, all of these companies are into joint lending. So fifty rupees come from Bank of Baroda. Just to start, take a name. Fifty percent came from Ugro. So the entire management of hundred rupees is done by uh, Ugro. Fifty rupees is on the balance sheet of Ugro. Fifty percent is off uh, off book for you group, so that's what the meaning of off book is. Okay, I think that's a good question. I think there was uh, I think Ankit uh, wants to ask the fact is ninety bay table rates are seven percent. Is a three percent uh, spread for a triple B better borrowers adequate underlying risk? Sorry, I so uh, give you. You need to be a okay. More in the article. current, uh, okay. So in the current increasing interest rate scenario, with the ninety-day table rate at seven percent, a spread of three percent for a, a triple B plus rated borrower is it adequate considering the risk? Uh, so it's a higher duration, but only three percent more than uh, table. Uh, is it adequate? Uh, 
Yeah. So I'll, I'll take this one. So yeah. if you see uh, the, uh, it, it's a very peculiar situation in India currently. The government of India is borrowing for 90 days, at not 7%. It's borrowing uh, to around 6.42% yesterday's bid. And uh, the banks are borrowing at 3.5, 3.25. So banks are rated AAA or AA. And uh, the government of India is borrowing at uh, 7%. So this is the first level of anomaly. So uh, I would rather not compare it with the treasury bill. I'll rather compare it to AAA corporate papers, which are banks or any other reliance corporate. They are borrowing at 3.5%. Triple B is borrowing it at uh, uh, 10%. So there is not a risk of uh, 7%. But there is not a risk of three percent, but a seven percent uh, uh, risk premium. So, uh, and other way to look at it, uh, the corporates are borrowing at a lesser cost than the government of India. So, uh, does that justify government of India borrowing at a seven percent? Ankit, so that's uh, my. We can get into an argument, Ankit. You can leave your contact, and we can debate this part. I think uh, the other question is, uh, if the companies have a good question, I think such a strong balance sheet, a good cash reserves, good support. Why do they need to raise? Uh, Money, uh, smaller amounts. Uh, I mean, from an interest rate standpoint, uh, yeah, locally. Shamil, so let me take that one. So, Shamil, all these companies, NBFCs or a bank, they are in the need of capital. What, uh, what capital is simply in the money. So, for them, the raw material is money. They take the money from from different sources and they lend to the different corporates. So, they want to diversify their resources of capital. So what are the resources of capital? One can take money from the banks. One can go directly a public issue. They can raise one. They can dilute their equity and raise the money. Third, they can go to the players like Giraffe who, who issue the bonds and then uh, sell it down in the market. That's another way. So uh, if you see when ILFS happened, suddenly banks became very risk averse. So, or during the COVID period, the banks stopped lending. But these companies needed capital to keep going in business. So uh, if you see any good uh, NBFC, they would not be 100% reliant on any bank. I think not a single NBFC would be reliant on 100% on, on the bank. They, they, If you see, there would be a slide somewhere, resource mix. Resource mix is nothing which they uh, they show at high, from how many places I am being able to raise the money. So this is why they raise money. And uh, they are ready to give a premium for different uh, Maybe if it's a capital market, capital market is nothing like the bond market, which is a simplistic term. So they are willing to give one or two percent extra over the bank loan just to diversify your cost of capital. So the, that's uh, the answer to it. Yeah, definitely. I think I'll say the same. I think broadly, any organization, if you see a lot of the organizations tend to do that, and that's a common practice, then they will have options to play with. If a deal goes into default, how does Giraffe help? Uh, I think we talked about it. So the process um, we normally say external would be is if it goes to a default, I mean, the, you saw the uh, terms, right? If it's a secured corporate debt, all of them are backed by secured. Uh, it could be on the receivables. Sometimes it's an hard asset. So Giraffe takes the ownership of working with the borrower. So the on behalf of the investors. So we will take and uh, go through that pause process. And uh, typically, it will go through a proceeding. And then as Vikas, I think, mentioned in the deck before, part of it, we could be a uh, collector or full part of it. And then we'll try to get as much as possible and distribute to the investor. So Giraffe as a platform not only creates opportunities, brings to the thing, they also monitor the investments, monitor the borrowers, and also take care if there is some default happens, how do we get back the money and pay back to the investors? And yeah. question from, yeah, anything, Sharma, uh, sorry, Vikas? I will just say, so uh, in a bond, so bond is a very regulatory product. It comes under the Companies Act. So for a bond, there is a third party agency called trustee, which is appointed as a uh, as a uh, custodian of the interest of the bondholders. So what it will do, say, uh, for example, if the company goes to, into rough weather and it goes burst, then the debenture trustee on the behalf of all the bondholders will do a case and uh, uh, obviously they have the committee of creditors formed and whatever the recovery, it will be the job of uh, 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 of the debenture trustee to distribute it. And it is under the legal framework of the of India. So even if it is a bank and it's an NCD, uh, it's a bond, even then bank will have to go through a debenture trustee uh, to the same. And uh, 
uh, so legal costs uh, obviously are borne by the company and uh, all those provisions are standard uh, again in any bond uh, condition uh, venu is asking uh, jp it's a question to you uh, there are some investment other investment platform with uh, which provide an option to exit prior to maturity date uh, is the same facility being provided by giraf or and the second part of the question is are you providing any minimum guarantee or the principal like rbi gives for fixed deposits for okay. the bank yeah that second one is very easy so there is this is an investment product so there is no guarantee on any of the investments that we have on our platform uh, so we are uh, curate and provide the opportunities but uh, while we do complete due diligence that is very prominent from the fact that there is no default till date uh, all our investments have that risk of uh, loss of prin- uh, principal and interest so i think i definitely want investors to have that in mind on the first question is whether we give an option to exit uh, we do not provide an option for uh, investors to exit and that's one of the risk we called out is a liquidity risk so and and that's one of the also the reasons why we want to make sure that our investments uh, are not only really across asset classes but duration also if you look at it invoices has 30 90 days there are 12 month uh, corporate bonds there are 24 month 36 month so we give an opportunity in terms of different maturity for different type of investments so that the investor can plan how those investments fits in their investment goals and in their uh, so that they can plan from a liquidity standpoint so we, we do not currently have any option for people to pay uh, any part or in full or in part uh, but something that will really look into it in future and then last question i have is for you i would say because uh, if so the late investor will have a different so i i think i didn't understand no, this so i think what, the question they have is if the repayment is delayed okay okay you got it no, no, no. so what sundar is trying to ask so uh, since you mentioned uh, deal are being sold at different dates mm. say if he is investing money today and uh, say yogesh is investing tomorrow will they have different repayment dates so that's what i have understood so uh, okay. let me take that uh, question sundar no the repayment schedule is fixed uh, so if you invest today you will get it say 1 lakh to 200 rupees uh, but your repayment schedule remains the same uh, you, on 31st december that's what a corporate debt as a product is it's a fixed tenor fixed yeah. amount of money you will get back if you invest tomorrow again you will have the same repayment schedule but tomorrow you might have to pay some additional money uh, because 1 lakh uh, 200 against which you will might have to pay 1 lakh 300 rupees so you are paying one day extra interest Uh, so today, say Giraffe is holding those papers, so you are giving those one day interest to me. So this is what it is. But the repayment schedule does not change, and I think this is the last question. And Yogesh, uh, very good question, I would say. Uh, tomorrow, JP he is asking if Giraffe uh, uh, winds up, uh, uh, and uh, what happens to us? Uh, will we lose our money? So uh, and how does the future plays out for us? So again, yeah, you, uh, you want to take JP, or I can take that. One. No, you can take it. Yeah. So, Yogesh, as we mentioned, uh, these are regulated products. Uh, these are under the Companies Act, and uh, uh, if it's listed, it comes under SEBI. So, uh, there is a debenture trustee, and uh, once uh, the bonds are transferred to your DMAT account, whether giraffe exists or does not exist, you will get your money directly in your DMAT account in the uh, bank account linked to the DMAT account. If the company you are investing goes bust. then there is a third party debenture trustee who will take who will contact you who will who has entire bank uh, i don't want to use your technical jargon beneficiary position and they will contact you and uh, seek your opinion what should we take a step ahead so all those all these uh, safeguards are very much provided in the legal frame, framework of the country so don't worry even if giraffe winds up uh, in the cases of bonds you won't have any issues perfect i think we uh, i think we covered all the questions i think uh, so uh, i will definitely want to again uh, thank uh, all the participants uh, who have participated uh, oh there was uh, one question uh, okay how uh, okay girish uh, you are a mutual fund advisor you want to become a business partner i think uh, drop in uh, i will just type an answer for you to contact us and uh, we will take the conversation after that okay girish Yeah, so just to add, if anyone has any query, you can mail us at support at giraffe dot com, and we'll be very happy to get back to you. Maybe uh, um, we might have missed some questions, so we apologize for that. And uh, 
we really thank you for a thursday evening for joining us and uh, we see uh, there were a lot of interesting questions we thoroughly enjoyed and i hope we have been able to answer some of the queries you know, thank you everyone. yeah i think thank, thank you, you. Uh, thank you all thanks thanks man Take care.